Hello, good morning. Once again, you are all welcome to um, day two of our um, ZK Techo Technical Masterclass on Biometrics and um, Time Attendance Solutions. Um, it's another day uh, we have to learn, relearn, uh, learn, unlearn, and relearn. For some of us, I believe we are already using the softwares. However, one or two, um, you know, uh, informations are needed in order for us to configure some of the, um, you know, uh, outcomes uh, of the softwares very well. You know, so there are one or two questions so far on the solution, and um, we want to get clarity around this um, application. Also. Um, on the device. I'll just quickly do a recap of what we had last uh, yesterday uh, on the introduction of the program. Uh, the program, once again, is a three-day program, a uh, technical program for partners and uh, installers, as well as uh, end users, if you need to uh, attain. Also, it's the certificate program. Yes, it was meant to be an online class, uh, a physical class, but right now, due to the COVID situation, we are actually running it online via the Zoom platform. All right, so, so what we're gonna do today is um, looking at the software and um, how the software manages um, the devices we use uh, um, for the for time attendance. Also, uh, apart from the time attendance device, would um, also look at uh, briefly look at the fingerprint scanners and the the type of uh, uh, sensors that uh, are used for uh, the fingerprints. Uh, I know more so the face facial devices and um, the palm and uh, RFID cards devices can, as well can be used for authentication. So we'll look at that. So we are re ready and set for today's class. We'll be starting with the um, zktime.net um, application for today. And um, we would have a short break after the, after the training on the zktime.net. Um, after that, we'll move on to the BioTime 8, which I know I have been having, getting a lot of questions about yesterday. So we'll have a lot of clarity around the BioTime 8. Right. Let's start. Yesterday, we talked about the, um, the devices. We talked about how to choose devices, the compatibility um, device support list. Uh, but today, like I said, we're going to be looking at uh, the softwares um, involved um, around the time attendance. We have the, the BioTime 8, we have the ZKTime.net. Um, we have the ZK Biosecurity. Also, we'll be looking at the licenses and uh, the costs. However, the cost um, would be, a, a, a chart will be sent via email to all participants for us to have the cost of the um, of the licenses and of, of for the softwares. So, and lastly, we'll look at questions and answers around configuration and how to configure the time attendance um, system. Okay, first, we need to know what's the, the BioTime 8, I mean, the softwares, uh, what are the features around the softwares that we're gonna talk about today, that lies on. Uh, the BioTime 8 is a stable web-based time and attendance management software that provides a um, connection to uh, ZK standalone push communication devices. Uh, push communication devices are devices that transfer automatically information from its memory to the application. So, and this can be achieved either by connecting the Ethernet cable, or if your device is Wi-Fi enabled, it's GPRS and uh, 3G SIM enabled as well. So it can be configured to function on a private cloud, 
to allow employees self service. Yesterday we talked about um, if you are going to host it yourself, if you are going to host it um, on on premise, then apply the public IP address to your server for it to be online. Then if you want a private cloud account, subscribe to it. Um, they will uh, host the application for you. And then if you require the I public IP, it will be added. Then you can be able to access it. Also, Biotime 8 uses, um, it has a mobile application. Uh, you can download the mobile application on Google Play uh, or Google Store. Um, however, if you're going to use the mobile application, you also need license for the mobile application. You can download and install the Biotime 8 and for free, it will run only run for 30 days. So after 30 days, you will be required to you know purchase your license in order to apply and to extend the expiry duration. But Biotime 8, I spoke yesterday, Biotime 8 is a life sign. Um, ZK Biotime is not a web-based. Yes, uh, you have to install it on premise. So for Biotime 8, you need a public IP for cloud accessibility. So multiple administrators can be can access Biotime 8 anywhere using a web browser. You can create multiple administrators to manage. Uh, if you have multi locations, you can create that to have multi locations. So each um, location can have an administrator, and the administrator will be able to see only um, the users or employees that are configured on it. So. Um, the same if you have a, if you have multi departments and you have head of department, you can assign uh, an employee to manage all the users in that department. So any information uh, for that department will only be seen by employees in that department. So you can easily handle hundreds of devices and thousands of employees with their transactions. So it is all about uh, knowing the type of devices that you must use to accommodate that can accommodate. And the number of transactions that you are looking at. So, um, also, Biotime 8 comes with a friendly user interface that is able to manage timetable, shift, schedule, and can easily generate attendance reports. License is based on number of devices, like I said yesterday. So, these are informations we need to have handy uh, when you are making a choice of which software you want to for your time attendance solution. Now the bio, ZK time.net 3 um, is a new generation time attendance management software. It integrates with time attendance and simple access control system management. So just simple. The main function of ZK time.net is at time attendance. However, it has simple access control system management. You know, a, a lot of customers are called in to say, I want it to do the normal access control management. No, what you need it for is for time attendance. However, for simple access control system, you, you can apply it to it. But if you need more information about asset, access control uh, software management, then you need to uh, get the access control management software. So although there are, the third module we're gonna be taking which is on uh, access control, we'll be, we'll be talking about the uh, types of access control software that ZK has to offer. So like I said yesterday as well, uh, the license for ZKTime.net 3 um, is based on number of users and um, is renewable after three years. So um, also, I'd like to talk about the ZK Biosecurity, which is like the all-in-one application. Yeah, um, is web-based security platform as well, just like you have for uh, uh, Biotime 8. It contains multiple integrated modules. You have the access control module, you have the time attendance, you have the consumption that's canteen management, you have elevator control, you have visitor management, you have uh, parking, guard control, entrance control, uh, use of face kiosks for event management. Um, you also have uh, uh, intellect, intelligent facial recognition camera management. Uh, you have the video uh, management system. Um, if you have the um, current mask and temperature detection devices, it can also uh, detect this as well. 
as other smart uh, subsystems that you have. Uh, okay, um, all the subsystems support both single unit deployment and multi module free combination and effective linkage. So you can you can have uh, the different modules, and um, if you want events to be linked, or if CCTV uh, captures, if you want an alarm to um, to be triggered and all that. So that's all in one so all the, all the solution in one application someone asked that question yesterday uh this is what zk biosecurity can do you have access control you have time attendance you have um, your cctv all in one application managed from one application this is the software to look at yes so but because we are talking about the time attendance only and uh, we need to focus on uh, the time attendance alone so uh, just needed to inform you uh, about uh, the functionality of this um, robust software. All right. Um, without wasting much time, because we have, we will require enough time to really explain um, the configuration around the ZK time.net and the BioTime 8. Uh, we we'll just have to get straight down to business today. So, we'll go straight down to business. So, I'll be taking the ZK time.net first, and there will be a 10 15 minutes break after that. Um, after the so after the training, we'll have questions around uh, and answers. Then we'll have a 15 minutes break, uh, after which we'll head on to uh, the BioTime 8 application and uh, software configuration. Right. So I'll be sharing my screen um, to have the software displayed. So this is what the zktime.net3 um, looks like. So um, first, let's get some information from, yes, if you need to, um, the, to get the license for this application, you, you click the settings icon and um, this information displays, you have the company name, you need to put this information. Yes, if you are going to, it depends on the type of um, license you are given. If you are given an online license key, you have to register it via online. Uh, manuals on how to um, uh, license your application is on the website. You can generate that on the website. Okay, if you want it offline, you first generate your UP, U, UPK key and send to us. That will be used to generate an offline key. So the offline key, when it's given to you, you can now um, uh, register offline. All right, um, quickly, uh, let me just say, um, if you have any questions, you need to note it down. Um, all questions will be um, attended to at the end of the class. Please note your questions. You can drop the questions either in the question and answer box or in the chat box. So we'll pick the questions one after the other. All right, so. Once you if you have an online key, you click the register online. But you can see, as you can see, you it requires three informations: the company name, the the country and region, and as well as the email. So you must put the administrative email that manages this account to it. So once you register, okay, let me let me do that immediately. I don't have the license key, but I just want to show you how when you click the register online, what it looks like. So I have a company, I call it. Second, please.
sorry this um sometimes you 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 have challenges like this right we'll, we'll come back to this i guess is the, the one i installed application i installed on my system but we'll, we'll get over this so let's just continue so first you need to add up a device you need to add up a device to start this application so i have with me here a device mb460 now mb460 is a time attendance device one of the new devices that um, we have for the time attendance basic yes just for uh, depending on the um, uh, capacity you are looking for. We have customers that are requesting that um, uh, they want a device that has internal battery that can stay for a while. Yes, not too expensive, not too robust. Yes, um, we're going to, for the sake of the test, we we'll use um, ZK uh, Teco MB460 device. So um, my device is actually having an IP address of uh, 192.168.1.201 and uh, on my system uh, I on my LAN port I have um, uh, the IP address to be 192.168.1.200 so I'm going to add the device here So, conf configure my LAN to be 192. Yes, I configure my LAN to be 192.168. You can have your own IP address range you want to use depending um, on your network config. So I just, my subnet is 255.255.255.0. So once I have that, like I said earlier, the IP address of my system is 192.168.1.201. I'm 200, while the device is 192.168.1.201. So going forward on this now, I'll just have to do quickly do a pin test, just to be sure that, um, to be sure that the, that the, that the IP address I've assigned the device is functional. So I'll just quickly show you the screen. So think, because you must confirm if the IP address is actually, uh, there's a communication between your system or the server on which the zktime.net is um, installed on is and reach the device. 19168.1.201. So if I put it on continuous ping, so as you can see, the IP the uh, IP address is communicating with the server. So um, go back to the software, right? So I'm going to add the device. What's the device name? It said MB460. What's the IP address? 192.168.168.1.201. Wow, this is the first device. I can add multiple devices. So um, the more devices I, I keep adding sequentially, I'll just be adding up one, two, three, and like that. So this is the first one I'm going to be adding. So um, for some of us, sometimes um, if you select 
some some of us can actually select area the default area but i must say this um, in zktime.net you can select you can select the default the default area but in bio time 8 you cannot use the default area in bio time 8 you must create another area to be used if you the first um area in bio time 8 is unauthorized you cannot use it so we've gotten a lot of questions around it that I, I bought the device from ZK Teco, it's not connecting, it's not working. Um, and the, the mistake has been that you are using the default area in Biotime 8. In ZKTime.net, it allows, but in Biotime, ZK, uh, Biotime 8, it does not. So I'm just going to use this as a test. So I'm going to test the device. And see to connect and all the information about the device are already displayed device model 4 mb 460 id fingerprint version 10 admin i've already i've registered two users on this that's why you can see the fingerprint so i've clocked severally on it that's why you can see the transaction to be six so the date format and the, the type of core board that you can see. Yes, the core board, type of core board and the uh, version of the ADMS firmware will show you, will indicate if a device can actually work for um, um, time attendance uh, on the, on, either on the biotime or zktime.net. So it's important for you to know the type of core board you are using and the type of uh, the version of the firmware of the ADMS you are using. So um, I'm going to quickly add this and save. So once I save under the device name here, you can see MB460 has been added. But first, um, what about the, the users I've registered on this device? How do, you, how do I get the users down into the application? How do I get the users down into this application? So I'll click on transaction, get transaction. So get transaction will display some information, starts to sync data, starts to get transaction. So this information would be synced to the application right away. So um, let's look at what data management is. Under the data management, you can sync the time of the server to the device. This is where you can delete all fingerprints. You can clear admin. If you have access to this application um, and you, you can't remember the admin privilege, you don't, maybe you are changing the HR or the admin who is managing the application or managing the device if the device is locked. You can clear the admin privilege on the device from here if you have access to this, um, uh, to this page. Once you click clear admin privilege, you can, you can delete that. So also you can delete all transaction if the device capacity is filled up and you want to keep using it. So um, depending on how you want to use it, maybe you have you were using the device some uh, at a particular location before and you want to reuse it, you can delete all employees uh, or you can delete all data. You can leave the other configuration on the device, but you can delete all data. So depending on what you want to use. So uh, for communication, for communication uh, submodule, um, if I click on read option, it's going to generate the information about this device for me. So uh, there I can see the subnet and I can see the gateway. Yes, I didn't assign the gateway to this device. So if I need to assign the gateway, I will assign. All right, so what does set option do? If I want to change the IP address of this device, I will type it here, change the IP. Um, maybe I now need to assign a gateway to it. So I have 168.1.1. So once I click set, 
question is now, are you sure you want to set this value to this device? Yes, I want it set to this device. So the new IP address of this device is 1.202 is uh, instead of the 1.201. All right. So um, for time attendance, like we said, so we are only using these three sub modules: the general data management and communication. But for the basic time attendance, I mean the basic access control. So that's where you need the door option, the regard option, and the duress setting. So since we are not talking about that the access control, we're just going to move, move on. We're going to move on. So next, after, the, after you've added the device, uh, you've clicked Get Transaction, and the information is, has been pulled. You want to see the users. You want to see the users connected. You make sure. The device cable is connecting. So the employees registered actually are uh, supposed to be here. But I need to quickly check the communication and be sure that um, all I have, the, 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 the configuration on the device is OK with what I have with the software. So I'll just go ahead and check my communication cable to be sure it's working. And also, if, if it's connected on the device, you'll see it will indicate that it's connected. So I, I changed the IP, so I need to put in the new IP here. Still going to hold on for the device to pull the information.
okay um yes is still picking the ip of the old device MB four six zero. That's one. One two three six eight dot one dot two o two. All right, so um, these are some of the challenges that sometimes our customers face uh, with connectivity. Um, sometimes you just have to get your connectivity right before uh, you continue. So you just want to play just some few minutes and then we'll get this up and running. Just some few minutes, please.
right, we are back. Just had some little challenges with the network port on the system, and this has been resolved. Computers will always act otherwise sometimes. Um, it's allowed, so the most important thing is getting it up and uh, running. So, in the test, again, and um, get transactions. Okay. Check the personnel. Okay. So these are the two users that have been registered on the device. So I have it here. So I just go ahead and edit the second one. So the name test. Oh, sorry. Baby. The value. So, yes, for departments, you can create more departments. Uh, let me just quickly do that and create more additional departments. Um, okay, um, department name I have IT, save. Next, I have um, say account, save. Add IT, save, and add another one. Hope you can see the screen. Okay. So I'm going to add a new, I'm going to add a new um, um, department to, to the application now. So I also have. Um, Making options, I have IT, I have accounts, I have, say, the MD, if you have to add the MD to the solution. Um, also, I have the HR, I see. I think this should be okay for what we want to do. So we need to run fast on this. Um, for Mr. Femi Adibayo, I'm going to assign the department accounts and um, explain the fields one after the other. Departments, the higher date, all right, this is the date that the, maybe the employee is starting the new job. I can change the, the year. So Mr. Femi Adebayo is starting Um, September, let's assume he's starting September 12th. Now, salary mode is in two forms. Um, if the if you are going to use the payroll um, module on this um, application, it's a simple payroll module. So if you're going to use the payroll module, um, are you going to be calculating based on per month? or you are going to be calculating uh, per hour, per hour worked on the application. So the application will do the calculation and will, you have inputted on the application the per day rate based on the number of hours that this person is working. So you, 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 you have the two options, salary mode, which is on a monthly basis, or work for wage mode, which is based on um, the number of hours worked. So, um, if you have the photo, you can um, add the photos here. As there are other informations, if you want to add a pin, password pin to that employee, you can add up here. If you had card number, um, if you're going to assign a card to the employee, you have it here. You can also register fingerprints. Uh, Either from the from the device itself, or if you have your uh, fingerprint scanner, that's the sensor scanner. So if you have the say USB sensor scanner connected, you can now use this. So for this, I can select. Um, I'm using the terminal. Okay, for this, so this is where 
uh, the type of device that will easily function well would um, really matter. If you have a device, a terminal device that would connect, you would have it here showing uh, the part of the information that the firmware running on the application is very important for it to be compatible. Yes, I can use this, but there are some uh, functions that will still not, uh, you know, work the way uh, would require it to work. So, and also the application, you must also get the right application to install and you, your system must meet up with the right requirements. So, if you're going to register your fingerprints, you can do it from there and you send to the device. Same thing, um, if your device is spam enabled, if it's face enabled, if it's finger vein enabled as well. So, um, area, like I said, you can select new area if you have the new area, but in Biotime 8, you must have the uh, uh, another area created and not use the default unauthorized area that, that is there. So for other information that you need, you can fill up the information and uh, get everything ready for the user. So we have added the device. We've added, um, we've added the device. We've downloaded the information from the device. So we've seen the employees that were initially registered. We've created departments. Now let's move on to the uh, second to the last part, which is the attendance, the attendance module. Um, first, um, if you are going to, let's quickly talk about the system module first before we move on to that. So the system here, you can uh, create a rule, configure the rule, um, general rule of the application. So as you can see at the top of the page, there is no access module. We were talking about the application being able to um, be used as an access control um, application, simple access control uh, application. You, the, the module button will not be there because you need to uh, enable it here in the software function. So um, if I want the payroll as well, I'll you know, select the payroll. If I want email alerts, I will also select it. So um, I'm not, we're not using, we're not, uh, um, we are not uh, talking about access control today. So we'll just leave that out of, of it. So I'm just going to enable the email alert and the enable payroll. So that I'm going to save. So you can see. I have the payroll and the email settings. You need to set up the email um, configuration before um, the email will send information. I mean, the, the software will send information to the uh, admin of this application, indicating um, events that are already happening. So for push setting, push setting, there is also an application known as WDMS. For some uh, partners that would want to host their devices, you want your device to be um, on a cloud. You want your device to be on a cloud, uh, connected to a cloud application. The cloud application is actually called WDMS. Uh, unlike the BioTime, which has both the um, WDMS inbuilt into it, uh, and you have the opportunity to install it on your premise. The WDMS you have to subscribe, install, and you know also do the same uh, public IP address thing to it. Now, from the WDMS, every transaction, every information that is happening on the device will be storing on the WDMS. Now, your application must connect to the WDMS from where you get your data. So, depending on the type of solution that you want, you 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 can get. But since we are not using the WDMS. So this is how the WDMS works. You have your port number also for the WDMS, then you can connect your devices, aggregate all the devices on the WDMS, then from the software, you can now have the WDMS, I mean, you can have access to the WDMS application, then you can now get the information. So, but because we are not using the WDMS um, application, we would ignore this. So it's just for us to know what the 
push settings and WGMA settings is all about. So for calculation uh, task, if you enable this, so what you are doing, like what you would do if you select mode two by default, is that at a particular time, you want the information on this device to be pulled to the application automatically. So if you want it to automatically calculate as well, because it's one thing to clock on the device, it's another thing for the application to calculate based on the shifts that has been created. So you can download records, you can download transactions, but you need to compute the transaction, the information of the clocking and clock out for you to know if the person, the user or employee is actually late or not. So other information that are required in the report. So you must calculate first before you get any other information. So if you are selecting mode one for this, it means you have to automatically say uh, set the start time when you want it to generate the report or from the device. Now, if you select mode two, what you are going to be doing is just to add the time to it. So just two different modes that you can play around with. So calculation task and um, the uh, calculation task for automatic in, uh, tran transfer of information from the device. All right, so um, that's on the config module. On the email settings, if you want email um, alerts to the admin who manages this application, you must create the email um, address of the uh, admin staff. So um, if I'm gonna be the one, I'll impute, uh, it, depending on your email settings in your office, you can get you can get this running if you in, input this. So my name, my email address, I have dot will. Sorry, dot will dot more at zk zko dash wa dot com. I have my password. Uh, now. If you are using Gmail, the information here, if you are using Gmail, the information here will be Gmail. But if you have an email account, you must know the name of your SMTP server and the port number uh, which is, uh, that is using. So if I have my password typed in here, in order for us to test if it's working, if all the parameters are right, it will give you the information. Yes, there are some security that which must be allowed before this can work on my own network. So you must get the network, but I, I can actually test with um, in, uh, an information that I already have here, like a, a server that has been created with no security on the network, I mean, uh, email accounts, so for us to test with. connection if the information is right um, like this is for ZK so oh let's get this parameter right Password. Is 
Server response was on rise. No, this is
right? Uh, I think the net the network went something went wrong. So sorry, let me come back again on this. On the role, for the role, you can create different managers. You can create an admin, a super admin. You can create location manager. You can create um, managers that manages the department, HODs. So with privileges, this is where you set with privileges. I can add a new uh, location, location manager, location manager. Right, so location manager, I can set privileges for the location manager. So um, for user, there's a difference between user. There's a difference between user and, please, we must note this. There's a difference between user and employee. User are administrators that manages the application. You want to give rights to people to access the application to to carry out some tasks for some uh for the employees employees are the staff that are going to be clocking on the machine so the users also can clock on the machine but they manages the application so those are just the two differences between that so operation log every information that has happened on this device are right I, I, I know they, they have a log of every information um, that has been configuration that has been done. So you can generate the logs, you can export the logs to, to MS, CSV, and um, for, for, for audit purposes. So for database, um, let's assume that something is happening at your, um, on the application on the system. You can back up database and uh, you can back up database and restore uh, when you are done installing uh, on the um, on the new server. So you back up and you must set the path. You can save the path and um, copy using your um, USB. If you want to encrypt the file, you can add a password to it so that when you are restoring, you can uh, add uh, password so you don't want um, an unauthorized, unauthorized person to you know pick information the, your the file and then they will now upload to another system and now manipulate it so so you can restore and if you want to initialize the database in order to start the settings all over again you can initialize but this must be done by an admin and you must know have a cogent reason why this has to be done so yeah, for policy, um, uh, for offices that have policies on what you do, uh, you must not carry out some information, carry out some tasks without uh, the right to go ahead from the superior. So that's all we have on system module. So I just have to quickly go back there because some one or two informations I'm sure would want to come out from that point. So um, let's go to attendance. This is where the main task is. Right, so for the rules, we have, um, this is like a general rule of the application, how the application works. I know that there are different companies with uh, different rules. Um, some have, you know, flexible uh, shifts that has to do with, um, uh, say, on a daily basis, you have different timing, you resume. Some can be three days in a week, the, is, the circle is changing. You have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in a week. Another week you have uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So depending on the shift, um, the application can actually work around that. So if you look at it for weekend, we have selected Saturday and Sunday for weekend, meaning Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday are the normal weekdays. So this by default, um, if I don't want to use uh, weekday work time level as over time, I'll just on, on uh, you know, uncheck this. But if I'm going to use it, it means I must get uh, the uh, overtime information right before this can be configured. But for the basic time attendance that we are actually here for, we we'll click there. So if, if you have any other information around the overtime, uh, you can email us to give you 
um, it's not it's not it's not common in most organizations today. Um, you know, and I can speak for one or two that I've worked on. Um, they don't work over time because companies may not have the resources to be paying over time. But for companies that use this over time, you can um, contact us on this. So, holiday. How does the holiday work? So we're going to look at this together. So, for holiday, you can add new holiday. Obviously, there's something wrong with this um, uh, software, the version I've installed. Uh, in case you have this experience, you just have to get the right one from the website. Uh, okay, let me just quickly run through this. Okay. Um, if you select circle by fixed date, what it means is if you have if you have holidays, fixed holidays, take for instance, October 1st for Nigeria is a fixed holiday irrespective of the year. So um, if I set this to be uh, uh, wow. sorry about this. Uh, maybe we have to some of this Challenges will be looked at again. Well, let me just go through this. If you have the circle by fixed date, it means if you have October 1st or January 1st or December 25th, December 26th of every year, the known dates for public holidays that are fixed, if you select those dates, are from start from you 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 get those dates as fixed on your timetable schedule such that if you are creating a date uh if you are creating a schedule on those dates without knowing those dates automatically will be assigned holidays so if you have um the dates of all the known public holidays um in the in the year you can fix those dates um, once and for all, except for the ones that will change. So once you do that, under circle by fixed dates, these dates will be will be um, assigned on your on the on the software calendar. When you are generating the report, it will exempt um, those days. But if you select holiday by fixed days, it means that if there are days that have changed, maybe the holidays have changed, you can now you know assign a date to, to to it then you can you can actually save these dates and assign to the number of days that you want so this um that's about the holiday for the advance uh we talked earlier we talked about the salary mode and the wage mode so if you want to use the salary mode to to pay staffs you can uh also select this use device attendance states meaning the timing uh, for it is what will be used for the months. Your clock in and clock out will be used for the months. All right, for um, wage mode, wage mode will show you, uh, we, we calculate based on the number of hours the, empl the employee is meant to work on a daily basis. Meaning if um, the employee is supposed to work two hours before he or she is, get, is being paid, the wage, the, the type of um, configuration you need is a wage mode. So you pay per hour on a daily basis. So for, for work type, 
um, the, this information are actually uh, there if you need to add it up to the schedule. Um, we also won't be talking of, okay, the statistics item in, in, in dollar. We won't be talking about this. We'll look at the timetable. All right, the timetable. I want to call this 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Right, that's the timetable name. And um, resumption time is 6. Closing time is 8. Now, quickly, let me talk about the timetable mode. Timetable mode is the normal regular time that we have um, for normal setup of time that you have to set all this other information. But for, uh, for flexible, you don't have a shift, but you want the user, I mean the employee, to clock. And it will only use for the check-in and check-out. You, you, you only have the first clock for the day and the last clock for the day as your check-in and check-out time. So for flexible, you are not using shifts, but it is based on the check-in time that the employee used and the check-out time. So you can set in the work parameters if you want to change the color for it for, to differentiate the uh, Okay, so I'm going to use regular because this is most common, but in offices where it is required, uh, you have to. So if you have a um, grace period of five minutes after six o'clock, um, allow late in, allow early out for five minutes. That means you are saying five minutes before um, the checkout time, if someone clocks out then, uh, he or she is still covered. So depending on the information that the rule, the business rule you want to create, so you can set all this. Uh, however, if you still want to use the first check-in and last checkout, you can, you can use select this information okay so i'm going to save this for the shift so i've created this timetable the shift name i want to call it normal because for some offices um we have only one so depending on the name you want to give your shift so what's the starting date for this shift i want to start so i'm starting today September 3rd. So the circle, are you, is this shift going to be on a weekly basis? And the circle length means from the charts, do you want to, how many, for how many weeks will this shift run? So if you look at this, you only have for one week. If I increase this circle length, I'll have the report for two weeks. with Saturday and Sunday being the holiday period. Okay. Right, if you noticed, um, for you need you have five days. You have five days under the timetable. You have five days to work with. So here we selected weekend and a weekend to be Saturday and Sunday. So you must check this uh, because it is important. Under the timetable, your start date is very important. Your start date is very important. You 
your start date for it to compute for five working days. So you have to take note of that. So that Saturday and Sunday would serve for um, weekends. So when selecting the days, your start date, you must consider Monday being the start day as in the first day of the work, working a, a week, right? So this is saved. So now we want to know what these three if buttons are for. Assigned to department, assigned to employee, and smart shift management, right? For assign to department, it means if you have employees in a department, like selecting accounts, every employee under accounts will be assigned that shift. Every employee under this will be assigned that shift. So, if I'm going to assign by employee, I can select only the administrator and assign by shift. I can assign to employee, I can assign to department. There are a lot of questions about what does smart shift do? Smart shift has no starting time and it does not have end time. You just set for the employee. It won't use it won't use it won't use the starting time. So if you now check the timetable of the employee, what you will be having is the smart time. There is no ending between when it's supposed to start and when it's supposed to end for the shift to take, to take um, place. For all the days, what you have is just um, the, the, the normal time you just clock and you, you clock in and clock out. It's just in uh, accordance with the flexible, flexible time. So, but for assigned to departments, it means all the, sh the shift you are assigning to the department is going to be taken by every employee in that department. So if you are now adding a new employee to the organization and you have registered the employee's ID, if you want to assign the department to that employee, that employee will automatically be assigned that shift which has been assigned to the department. So it's important. If you are assigning, you can also assign to individual employee as well. So, temporary schedule. Let's take, for example, you have a department called HR, um, and you need to create a timetable for a department. You need to create a timetable for employees in, a de in that department or, or, or in the department. I can select the normal other work type. I want to select normal work, which is what I've created that six to six. So if I select Tuesday, I can assign this employee is required. So uh, let me select this one that has an employee. So I can assign Tuesday to the employee. For example, if the employee is going to work two days on you know, there's this kind of shift that you have two days on, one day off, and like that, you can also create that and put Thursday as day off. So Friday, the employee is going to come to work again. He's going to come to work on Saturday, you are signed. So here you can manually create a timetable for the employee.
So you can select the days. And assign. So depending on the day of you know, and also there are questions that what about overtime? Now for overtime, if I'm going to work on a Sunday and I want to be paid overtime, I will select OT for it and assign overtime to it based on the number of hours. That I'm supposed to work. So, so this Sunday can be assigned to overtime under the temporary schedule. Under the temporary schedule. For the normal schedule, it's going to be based on the shift um, structure. But if you want to create a timetable, you can set that under a temporary schedule. Right? The last module, which happens to be the exception uh, assigned. Yes, there was a question um, as to how do I um, create leave. Now, if it's sick leave, exemption is just to, um, let's take for instance, is an employee did not come to work on a particular day, he or she is actually expected to work, and um, you can't, the employee is not available, you you, after generating the report, you, at least before you generate the report, you must get your facts right. And um, you discover that the employee is not, is on sick, is sick and was not available. So now the employee needs to uh, put in his exemption email to say, I wasn't in the office because I was sick. So on, on that particular day, you can, you can select for that employee and say, okay, on this day, the employee was sick but you need um, to set you need to set the time based on the shift period. Employee is using temporary schedule. Oh. So on this day, maybe the employee did not come to work for three days, and you are going to compute the transact the, the, the clocking for that day. You know, there are some companies that if you do not, if you are not in the office uh, for three days without no reasons, they are going to deduct your salary and uh, deduct from your salary. So in order for that not to happen, if this application is going to be computing the payroll, you must configure the exception um, rule to that particular employee's timetable so that by the time you are calculating it's showing that oh this employee based on the shift that this employee is on this employee is actually sick so as you can see you can also do for annual leave if you select annual leave if this employee is not going to be in the office for this number of days maybe for a week and assign the annual leave to this employee. So the employee is assigned this. I think that answers the question from by uh, Mr. So then the last module on this is the reports. The reports. If I want to get transactions, okay, let me do one or two clocks. Okay. I want to generate a report from uh, 
okay. There have been some clockings on it, right? But first, like I said, you these are just transactions, people who have clocked. Um, but if you want to generate more of the reports, you have to calculate and allow the application to, to, to compute the information of both checking and checkout as the shift um, has been assigned. So just to check for all the users. So for the administrator, ah, all right, before you calculate, there's something um, uh, we shouldn't miss out. You must go back to the device before you calculate. You must go back to the device and um, get transaction. You must download the information from the device to the application. So, downloaded 11 records, new five new records. So, then you go back to your report, calculate. You can see here it was past nine. But because of the latest information, the administrator you have for um, 11.56. I can export this information to Excel. To save this file in my document folder. So for the different types of reports that you would want to generate, as the report format suits um, transaction reports, All as the as all the users as they are clocking in. Total, you can generate total. Uh, Total daily total reports. And download time card reports. And clock in and clock out. Early hours reports. If I'm going out of the office early, early out 604. Based on this, this is going to be reports. Of course, it's going to be based on the, the shift. And if you if you had selected flexible schedule, if you have selected flexible schedule for um, the reporting, you, you can generate um, flexible schedule because we are not we are using regular, so there will be no information for this. So if you want monthly statements, this. Can generate depending on the type of format. So these uh, report formats are um, available for us to check and use. Uh, exemption reports. Um, I don't have the 
license on this yet, so some report formats would not um, be displayed or allowed. So that's the essence why you need a license. So, and check out the different report formats for us to work with. So if you um, have any question around this, we can quickly look at this based on bio time. Our time is actually fast spent. Um, so let's just take questions. Let's take questions now. Mr. Akin, can we look at their hands? Let's look at from the questions. Question and answer session. If you have questions, you can raise your hands for us to allow you to ask the questions. But then let's take one or two questions already. So we have, can your ZK biosecurity software integrate with other third party hardware? like the IP surveillance you talked about. If it's OMVIV compliant, if it's OMVIV compliant, um, OMVIV protocol is um, a universal protocol which uh, all um, manufacturers are beginning to work on right now. So um, if it's OMVIV, your hammer is OMVIV compliant, it's, it's hard. And we use DSCP and what is the effect? Um, I don't know if Mr. Aliu is still there, um i need to know okay except if you're asking if you can use dhcp on your device for connection yes the dhcp option is there once if you are using lan connecting your network cable or if you are connected to your wireless um wi-fi depending on the device you are using you you can use um, dhcp you can use dhcp except that you must make that ip address static uh it has to be a static ip sorry it has to be a static ip your device cannot be changing ip addresses all the time because um when you are adding the device you are adding a static ip to the device so it must be a static ip address please and zk teco mv460 work with access control um mv460 MV460, we have to check that just a minute. Get a cool MV460. MV. I, I guess you want to talk about MB, not MV. MV460. Trying to check the device model out for us to be sure. I think maybe what you mean is MB460. MB460 can work as an access control on a just stand alone basic function. Stand alone basic function uh, with one door. What is the capacity of if you if you are using the device, you can generate the capacity. You can check under system info uh, to know the capacity of the device. Is it a license-based software? Yes, ZKTime.net is license-based. Um, someone is asking if Speedface V5L can be used with ZKTime.net. Speed phase V5L and not work with um, zktime.net uh, based on the firmware version, uh, based on the firmware version and the ADMS um, information. Um, you can check um, the compatibility list of devices that can work with zktime.net, and this will help. Uh, Mr. Victor Dele is Please, I noticed this webinar is being recorded. I'd like to know if we can have it after the yes. You are going to have this. Um, we're going to merge the class of yesterday and today, and um, the YouTube link will be shared 
with all participants. How do you access data management module when you can't log into the soft due to login data loss as an admin? Uh, okay, if you have uh, a challenge around this, you can you can reach get back to us, and I would I would find a way around. Um, the device because the what you're asking is management of the on the device management of the device if you have any issue trying to access the device when the administrator is not available or is no more working in that uh, office uh, you can get back to us and then um, would uh, get this result for you is do you have any device and software to monitor start working from home Staff working from home. Mm -hmm. uh, depending mm -hmm. on the organization, um, I think um, one of our application that is being developed right now is would cater uh, for that because um, would, it will be incorporated into a mobile app. So you can you should be able to uh, clock from anywhere using the GPS. So that will be looked into. Um, once that application is out, we can work. Uh, we can work. Use that to uh, for, for working from home. But um, looking at it, uh, working from home is really um, not um, effective in terms of trying to monitor um, the staff. If you are going, to, if you are not going to allow the staff to work from home, so why did you allow the staff to work from uh, to work from home? I mean, if you are going to generate reports of why he or she is going to work from home. So what is important is, is, the, is the employee uh, delivering on the task that he or she is going to, be, uh, um, is going to uh, carry out. So there will be no need as, as I'm concerned, except if you need to generate reports of location from where the employee is working from. So um, you can use the GPS. That is being worked on at the moment. Is the license a once or Yes, um, for ZK time.net license is three. You have license for three years, license for five years. So depending on the option, are we going to be certified after this training? Yes, there will be a um, there will be a question and answer uh, test tomorrow, and um, we we'll want everybody to go. But being the first edition, we will be certificate of training. But um, we would also consider those uh, participants who are uh, participating in all the three days sessions. So you must not miss out in all the sessions. It's important. You must not miss out in all the sessions, please. Uh, assessment test also is going to hold for this class. Um, does this device comes with default software apart from the licensed option? Yes, you have the default. However, if the software does, if the disk does not contain the application, you can access the website to download it. It's free. You can download the application for free. How can I remotely connect to ZK time dot, uh, ZK dot net 3 is not a web-based application. You install on on premise. Install on premise on the server. Please, when are you going to talk about Biotime 8 or higher version? Um, we're going to commence Biotime 8. Um, almost similar, but um, just one or two differences. Similar uh, configurations, but one or two differences. We're going to start that in the next um, 10 minutes. Right? Having bought ZK Techo products with original software from you guys, why one more trial version, sir? All right. Um, the license. Um, it's like you are downloading uh, antivirus um, um, where the selling point is actually in the license. Um, there are applications that are free, but if you want, they, are, they might be free, but they don't give you the right for outcome. But if you must 
make use of some important modules, you must get the license. You must get the license. It's very important. So uh, we'll take questions from uh, we we'll take questions from uh, our audience. We we'll take questions from our audience now. If you have people raising their hands or from the chat session. All right, Mr. Olabisi. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for being online today again. We, you were here yesterday. Uh, yes, yes. I, I actually came, I joined uh, very late today. I just joined not quite long and I know I have missed a lot. So I don't know if uh, when you are putting this on your YouTube, just like you said yesterday, so that will be part of uh, what you are, what I've missed today. That's the essence of my uh, question, please. I want to know when the, um, today's lecture will be uploaded on your YouTube. Okay. Thank you. Yet, yesterday's class being the introduction, and this um, today's class will be will be done uh, today and uh, merged tomorrow. Um, you should start. Oh. You should, yes, you should start because you know it takes time to upload mm. those files on, yes. uh, on YouTube. Uh, so, all right, so Max, tomorrow the file should okay. be up, up there on our YouTube channel. All right, thank you so much. All right, you're welcome. If you, you. if you have any other questions, you can reach us um, privately, send us an email um, on your software installations um, and challenges around okay. software. So um, it's not only limited right, to this lecture, you know. All right, thank you so much. I will. All right, thank Mr. Lab, thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. All right. Some other people mm, no, no. Hello, Mr. Deji. Hello, Mr. Deji. Right. Hello, Mr. Isaac. Yeah. Good. Um, good morning. Good afternoon from Nigeria. Oh, good morning from Ghana here. Okay. All right, Mr. Isaac. I actually got your WhatsApp message. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so in the next ten minutes, in the next ten minutes, we will commence the the bio time eight. However, if we don't have enough time. I can I can still assist you uh, privately uh, on the on the configuration of the, of the bio time if you don't mind. Okay, uh, but please, um, another question is, um, why don't you um, add lances on the product that we no, usually no. buy from you? Is that not for your day? Yeah, um, yeah. licenses no. are not added for no, you to. Not, no. I was, for I you, was to, uh, you. You, you have just thirty so days you have just 30 days trial for you to try out the application. You know, for some organizations, what they want is that they, 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 want, they also want to uh, develop their own application. They also want to develop their application to meet their needs. So they might not necessarily want to use that pay bio time. Will, some, some organizations will request for the SDK kits. Because they want to develop their own application. So depending okay. on what you want, you can what is the problem? Uh, write your own application, get to the SDK, which is not which is also um is not free. Uh, in order for you to develop your own, and um, if you don't want to develop, go the route of developing. Get the license. Get the license. Okay. In order for you to enjoy the uh, modules in the application. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Sir. Can we have other questions? Hello, Mr. Joshua. Hello, Mr. Joshua. Good afternoon, Mr. Joshua. Hello, Mr. Gustav. Mr. Joshua, okay. don't seem to be around. Mr. Gustav. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, okay, please. I want to know: Is it possible to make interface between 
uh, build time and uh, another set software. If you want to, you want like, to integrate uh, this application into another application. Yes, uh, when you want to manage a hotel during the check-in, is it possible to make a, an interface between your time and the hotel software? I, 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 I'm sorry, I didn't get that question right, sir. Third party software. Is it possible to make integration between interface between your time and uh, hotel management software? Uh, do, are, are you are you the one that developed the hotel management software? No. No, because the two the applications are two different applications. I know, what, but we sometimes we use to make interface yeah. between the two applications. We call it interface. When the customer arrives with them, the same card can open uh, the room when there is a check-in. When oh. there is a check-out, we cannot open. You cannot open the room. That solution is called hotel lock solution, not yeah. time attendance. Okay. So you have, that's what I'm saying, you have a different application that manages the hotel locks. Okay. You have a different device that manages um, uh, time attendance. Time attendance is, might just be one, or depending on how the organization is being, uh, the, the capacity of the organization, they might have more than one device for clock in and clock out. So the one you're actually talking about, I guess, is for um, uh, hotels, where you, you configure cards um, to be used on a particular door. So if the expiry date assigned to that card is, is, is off, you can't yeah. access that door. Yeah. But your time, I can use it to manage uh all the the personnel um the you employees the, you know you use you can use this particular one to 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 to, to manage employees employees this zk time dot net however yeah. if you are looking for one application just one that can manage both your hotel logs and your time attendance you need ZK biosecurity. Biosecurity, okay. Yes. Okay. So ZK biosecurity is all in one application. So you have the um, hotel lock solution, you have the time attendance solution, you have the access control module, all in one application. So you now do your configuration. Okay. And what's about the old device when I arrive in? some customer old F, uh, Z, uh, TK, uh, device. Okay, with old devices, um, I think um, it, it, it may not work based on the firmware version running on it. Uh, but it, 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 you, you can actually send us an email. Let's get to know the, the type of device and the type of version running on it. If it's the device that can be, the firmware can be upgraded, we'll let you know. All right. Hello, Mr. David. Hello. Hello. Hello, Mr. David. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I consign, I asked the question. Especially on that and Z, uh, ZK biosecurity. Okay. Can it be used with another hardware? Like, uh, let's say we have the OWA CCTV cameras or we have Igvision CCTV camera. Then we bring in your software. Can we use your software to manage them? Um, is your camera own view compliant? Yes, it's own view. On, uh, it's an, let's say an IP camera. Yeah, you know there are some IP cameras that are not own beef compliant. So we need to be sure if the camera is own beef compliant. Because you know, that's when you say the... own when you say own view, own view comp, uh, compliance, you know when when that camera have you can actually install the app on your phone and your phone has access to internet, it means you can actually view it wherever you are. So it means you can actually view that camera wherever that camera is installed. 
So my question is, can we integrate your ZBIO to it? In the sense that you can manage any other third party alias. No, uh, let's let's get it one after the other, sir. Okay. Uh, if you are going to talk about compatibility, there must be a protocol that would allow um, third party devices to connect to um, another um, video management solution. Okay. Now, the protocol that allows intercompatibility between two brands, especially for CCTV, is called OMVIF. Okay. If you check HIC Vision, if you are going to integrate HIC Vision with another brand, you must you can only integrate if it has OMVIF. So if your camera is OMVIF and you have um, ZK Teco, soft video software if it is own beef compliance it would function if it's not own beef because there is no protocol to link the two of them it would not work now the own beef is not what allows you to view online on your phone what allows you to view online on your phone is a is a cloud service that you have registered your either your dvr or your NVR or mm -hmm. your IP cameras that you know there are IP cameras that can be um, uh, that that can be added to the cloud based mm -hmm. on the features it has. So yeah, yeah, if yeah. you are able to assign uh, add those cameras or DVRs or NVRs to the, your cloud where to your cloud service where you can view it via your mobile phone, some you have to use the P2P uh, mode, some you have your DDNS. Depending on the configuration you are, you are assigning yes. to the cloud uh, service, that's yes, how you can view on your mobile app. Yes, I know. All right. So, but if your camera is home beef compliant, it's so if we are to buy, if if we are to purchase your all your hardware, including the cameras, are you saying that your ZK will also manage that conveniently, in respect of being home view or not? Yes, we need to, you, you, you. Also, you need to send us the model of the camera for us to confirm. Oh, like, if we want, if we want to purchase your own camera, if you purchase our, your, your if yes, you purchase, your ZTECO camera, ZTECO camera. If you purchase our ZK Teco cameras, it will yes, function and, on a third party NVR or DVR. Okay. Okay. Fine. No problem. Thank you. That was my question. You are welcome, sir. And can we have one more question? One more question before we move to bio time. One more question. Hello, Mr. Joshua. Hello, sir. Mr. Hello, Mr. David. Yes. All right. You raise your hands for questions, sir. Oh, it's our sorry. Hello. Hello, there, Mr. David. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, my question is um, very straight and very simple. Like, um, I actually missed yesterday's um, class. Okay, sir. okay, sir. You made mention um, that um, tomorrow there will be an assessment. So I want to find out how can I get yesterday's uh, information so that I will prepare for this assessment. Well, this trend is very important to all right we will try as much as possible to see how we can upload this today please please someone has asked someone has asked the same question would we'll quickly um uh, upload this video today so you can check our video channel so we'll try and send an email on uh, the link so that you can view it okay thank you very much all right sir. okay um please stay tuned um, I know some of us want to quickly put up some things in the next um, five minutes. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? All right. I can hear you now, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, I wanted to know the, the, the date for the exam because um, I don't know. Maybe you just responded to that question because someone just asked something similar and uh, I wanted to be sure that... I heard you clearly. When is the day for the exam? 
It's tomorrow, sir. Tomorrow. So that means we need the video because you know it's good for us to go through the video after um, the class like this, and then we get acquainted properly for the second time with all you uh, mentioned. Because I heard you saying that the video will be uploaded in uh, two weeks' time, I mean, uh, next tomorrow. And I think it's not uh, going to help us to. Like, okay. Uh, um, what, what, what I'm going to what I'm going to do is, okay, mm. for the participants, mm. um, because I, I can see people are eager to get the certificate. So and, it's, be, and if, if it's based on the assessment test, um, I would liaise with my team and see mm. if we can schedule a date uh, for the assessment test. Allow everybody to watch the video and mm. get the information yes. right. Yes. Then we we'll put up the assessment test and. Um, uh, we can now have uh, the assessment test on a particular day. Then from there, we can issue certificates to our participants who passed the exam. That would be very nice so that it will help the exam to be valid and reliable. All right. All right. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Joshua. Thank you, sir. All right. So we'll be back in still on this same. Uh, you, you don't need to, you don't need to uh, disconnect. Just stay tuned, we'll, we'll commence the bio time in the next five minutes.
Hello. We are with you, sir. All right. So let's quickly start on bio time. Um, start from adding the device, right? There's this similarity between the two devices. Okay, I mean the two softwares rather. Um, I'm I'm using I know one A right now for the um, bio time eight. You might be using um double uh, mp 450 for your bio time 8 what i'm using right now zk zk i know one a for for it so there are two ways you can add the device you can either add the device automatically or you can add the device manually like you can see the device i showed showing automatically right now and um the what I did is just to add the IP address of this camera on which I have installed the Bio Time 8. I've installed the IP address on the uh, ADMS. That's the cloud server setting of the device. So if you check your device under communication, any device can under communication and share. Displaying on, uh, displaying on, on, uh, on the URL page of the uh, web uh, browser. Um, my IP address, in order for me to show, my IP address is 19.168.1.1. Right, as you can see. That's the IP address of the server. So once this is connected, you can uh, log in. I can log in via my local host as well as using the IP address of the, of the server. So um, let me go ahead. Once you have completed that, the device automatically, automatically be added. Area name. I said earlier when I was taking the by ZK Tangent. I told you the area, this one area is not authorized. You cannot use it. So, what we need to do first is to add a new area. So, you go to personnel area. You can see the first one is not authorized. I've added Lagos, Abuja, Enugu, and Edo. So, I'll go back to the device. And um, select it. So by default, the area number has been added. The area I'm going to check Lagos and any other information um, will be by default. If you if you are going if you have more than one device and you want to maintain one device as a device, um, the option of maintaining the device will be changed to yes. So if not. 
So um, on no. So I'm going to confirm. So as you can see, and, um, my device already is connected. The status. So we want to go back to the device already. The time zone, Nigerian time zone is plus one. Nigerian time zone is plus I still need to change the device name. Okay. Um, user, user quantity zero, fingerprint zero, trace zero. So I all I need to do is to add user as a user. Of two users on this device. So I need to call the users to the application. I'll select the device and upload user data. Or, as you can see, you have two users now with two finger fingerprint quantity. So I need to go to the dashboard to show you something. The dashboard is where you, you, you see, you get information real time. If I go to the you, you get information of users that are going to uh, be uh, connected. Once they start, you're going to drop their information real time. But for the first time, I'm going to that you can move part on this. You can see information that has been added already. ID. At the top here, you see ID1. Automatic um, synchronization of the device. Based on timing, you take a second and three seconds before it will it will display on the screen. So here you can see the timing of you, you can you can see uh, uh, the movement of late leave absent on a chart and those who are absent so you can use that information to uh, for different purposes okay so let's go to personnel and see how many users personnel you have um yeah you have another department but the first one already first one as the organization Have it as a, a test, test training. So every other one, 
and select department There we go. Um, the next thing is position. Now, position shows you um, um, the category, the cadre of all the um, uh, of all the employees. You need to know whether those who are man uh, holding managerial roles uh, in, in the organization. So you have the so you have to assign these positions to employees. Also, the area we've done that. If you have multiple locations, you want to, you want to assign devices to a particular location. You must add the area to the, to the device. So the next one is employee. Employee. This is where we get the uh, Now, the name of this user is uh, seven. For the, for the test. Seven Adi. Now the position of Seven Adi is the is COO, and the area of Seven Adi is is in Lagos. Employee type is this uh, employee a permanent staff or a temporary staff? So we, we select. Now, if you are going to use the mobile app to access the timing as well, what you can do is. Go to app setting and click the app. App setting, you are enable the app setting for this particular employee. Such that on the application, on the mobile application, you need um, also to, the, the administrator will configure the server ID and the server port on the application for you to be able to connect. Please don't forget that if you are using by time, if you are, are not uh, deploying it on a uh, cloud server, private cloud server, you have to put it on a hosted cloud server. So depending on which um, arrangement you have. So employee. So the what the employee that owns the mobile app, that owns the mobile phone. Is that employee going to have um, the administrator role to manage the uh, to manage the software, or they need to be just an ordinary employee? So, if I'm just an ordinary employee, I will select employee. If I'm an administrator, I will select administrator. Meaning, the functions I can I can use on that mobile app is going to be different. So, um, same thing. You have the payroll. If you're going to use it on a monthly basis. Uh, or, 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 or you want to be paying cash, so you need to indicate. So, for other documents and other information, you can input them as uh, as it is required. If you actually go to um, those information, so. I want the app to have to make use of the app. So if you look at the app status of Shagun, means Shagun can actually use the app. Uh, the next employee Okay, for device privilege, 
if you want to assign device administrator to you, you can do you can do that as well and assign a pin to the uh, administrator or they're gonna use their Um, enable attendance. Yes. Yes. Now, for the password, this is the password that we are going to assign to this particular user, either on the mobile app or if he or she is going to log in to their different profile pages. Okay? We are going to log in to their different profile pages. We are going to assign this as admin and confirm. Now, Anyone can actually log into this application using the password I have just created for Kevin and also with the password. So, if you want to try it out, you see if Kevin can log into this application as Kevin and not the administrator. So, you have um, the IP address. Hundred seven thousand log out. Now for as a super admin, I am using admin login. I want to use the application as my own profile page to keep information. I will use settings and the old admin ID. So what's my password? To the admin and check what the password is again. So on the password, we have control key. I'll edit seven again. So, I have the right password. I've been able to go to the pen drive. Not by price. Pen drive. We have only the brand new ones. I say go through. No more traffic price. You know, I take to the city. Okay, as you can see. It's only showing Shagun, meaning Shagun is logging in into his profile. Shagun can che only check his attendance. Every information about Shagun you can find here. So it means if you have an organization where all employees have access to their PCs, they can all log in and information can be shared by the um, HR or by the admin and messages can be pushed as notifications to everybody so they can see those informations. You can, as, as an employee, you can set your leave, add, create your leave and your, it will be added up to the sense to the HR who we approve. You can have multi-level approval depending on how you want, want it. So, let's move on. I'm going to log out from Sheldon's account now and login back as the admin. Most of the timetables, the shifts, most of the configurations with the, uh, are, are similar with that of um, the zkTime.net. So whatever we have done in the zkTime.net under the attendance module uh, is almost the same thing. So we have this. Go back to the past. And the admin you can see the number of modules that displayed during um, the, during the uh, bio time, 
portal. Yes, saying welcome admin because I'm logged in as, as the admin. So we are done with the employee. We will add the device. Um, so let's using the Automatically, the information is syncing to the device. You can see the last activity is 12.58. You can take your time. That's 12.58 on my own system. So you're going to pick the system time uh, because it has connected to it. So if you check transaction, So I have eight transactions now. Now I need to go to attendance. Like I said the other time, hello. I, I hope I hope you can you can all hear me. All right. Okay. So yeah, we can hear you. But uh, your line is very, very, um, the audio is very bad. It's been going on and off. Okay. Is it clear now? Yeah, okay. It's, it's okay. All right. I can see hands raised. Maybe I can take questions from here. Let's, let's, let's take, I can see some hands raised. Hello, Mr. Aluko. Yeah. I, I guess you have a question. You want to quickly ask yes, the question? Yes, the difference between, between the bow it's and uh, the dot net, the previous one, what's the difference? You say higher version, you say a higher version. No, it's not a higher version. Yes, they might have some different um, functions. Uh, for BioTime 8, it's web-based. Um, it, it, like I, I was able to log in on a browser using either the local IP or the IP I've assigned, the local host IP or the IP I has assigned to the, to the system. So I, and I'm going to use the IP and the port number to locate the application. So if on the network, if on the network I want to connect to the bio time from another PC, all I need is just the IP address of the server on which the bio time is running on and the port number. If I input the port IP and the port number on another system, I will get I will be able to um, log in into the application. So but for zktime.net. It's only on that application, on that server where you have installed it that you can access it from. So it's limited. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, sir. All right. So, um, after the rule, there are some rules so that if um, an employee is taking about one thousand minutes. Maybe let's go for about 1,000 minutes. That's about uh, that's 1,000 divided by two. That's how many hours? That's about um, almost the whole day. So it will be counted as absent. So if 100 minutes divided by two, it will total hours. And so if that person did not work in that hour, you are saying uh, that the person should be counted as. Um, when any leave exceeds 1,000 minutes, count as absent. So if your person is, is missing 10 minutes, count as late for 60 minutes. Same thing as early minutes. Right? So um, depending on how the rules you want, if somebody did not clock in, so you can set that here. So you have a basic rule, you have a weekend. Um, you have to access it as well. So if you want 
the app on the app to capture the picture of the staff if they clock in. If you want the app to capture the picture as they clock in for mobile, uh, using their mobile phone, uh, I told you if you're going to use your mobile phone, it means the application must your GPS must be turned on on your mobile phone. So if your GPS is functioning, then it can it can work. If you want a situation where if they if they try to clock in from their mobile phone, um, it will require and ask them, uh, ask the employee uh, that is it check in or check out you want to uh, activate on on using your mobile phone. You can uh, you can capture capture um, uh, that is check in status or the check out status. So I go straight to the timetable. Just show us the similarity. We have activated Now in ZKTime.net, what was there before was regular and flexible. Regular, you don't need a sheet. I mean flexible, you don't need a sheet, but regular, you need a sheet. So normal, we're gonna create this. Be eight o'clock. It's to five. That's seventeen hundred. Right. Checking staff are safe. I do not see the earliest person is there. Checking ends by ten. Check out ends by. Uh, let me do. Check out ends by twenty-three hundred. That's eleven p.m. So, work day. Is still within the same day, so it is required. So the um, just call this eight a.m. to five p.m. Normal. So eight a.m. to five p.m. Normal. Right. Next. And that's time. Time to do this. This last one. And I want on a weekly basis. Echo once. Now, to assign either to department or to employee, or you want to create a timetable. Where you can select different time time shifts within a week or within a month. So if my week on a weekly, if my shift on a weekly basis is changing, then I can manually create it. Yeah. So and uh, let's take for example employee shift add schedule for schedule. I want to add. Normal standard shifts for him. So, so once now let's see the difference between the two. Our temporary shift. Okay, for share for summary. Um, for normal work time for week one. I'm going to select eight to five. I can select for week two to be morning. I can select for week three to be afternoon. Week four to be nice. So depending on my shift timetable, I can also say if there is holiday, If 
I have my holiday created, because I've not created the holiday, if I have the holiday created, I will assign this as holiday. So depending on um, what time, if you want to create a timetable or you want to automatically assign a shift that is, con uh, that is uh, you know, uh, concurrent shift um, running for a month or for the whole year, you can, you can have this to um, do it. So, now for approvals, you can create different approvals. You can set up um, different uh, employees depending on their category as, as, uh, 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 as uh, approval to any request, either to leave request, maybe um, you want to set up um, approval for a department and the department has, they have their, um, they have their, uh, they, they have their head or the supervisor and they want the supervisor to, to approve either their leave request or exemption request or whatever seek request. So you need a, um, approval and you can set up multiple approval levels, either the first approval level being the HOD. Um, once the approval is created, emails can also be sent. So if you create approval level from first approval level to second approval level, once it's, uh, once it's approved, then that leave becomes automatic. For holiday, we can create different holidays here, yeah, just like we did um, on, on the ZKTime.net. For calculation, um, for every time that Shegun and Tolani clocks, it's important that before you generate the report, you must calculate the, um, the clock ins and clock outs from the device. So, like you know, automatically. The, the clock in and clock out information are syncing to the application immediately using the bio time. It happens within, it's also the same with the ZK time, but you must set it. But with this uh, bio time, it syncs automatically. So I want to generate reports for the two of them. I must calculate. Calculate first before you generate your report. So I want Shagun. So you can see the first punch, 811, last punch, um, 1258. I have on it. I can also add it to calculate for me. If you want to generate first in last out, you can also do the same. So I've only done checking today on it. So depending on the uh, on the report format, you just uh, check out the format that meet your needs. You can generate reports for any user. If there are leads based on the shift, if they are early in and um, early needs, maybe someone who left the um, office um, before before time. All right. Um, so that's just the two um, applications that we'll be able to take today. So I would employ us to um, try as much as possible to download these applications and come up with our different questions. Uh, we'll be online to assist us on um, any of our requests based on these two applications. Even if you have uh, questions about the ZK Bios Time Security um, that has the, the multiple modules that caters for different solutions, we'll still uh, be on ground. So. Uh, uh, attend to your request. So um, after immediately after this class, if you have any challenges privately with your configurations or setups, uh, please you can contact us uh, on um, my 
on our support line, support at zketeko-wa.com or you can reach me on godswill.omorigi. Uh, let me put that up. Let me put that up. You can reach us on our emails, uh, godswill.omoribi at zketeko-wa.com or support at zketeko-wa.com. So um, if you have any questions around this, um, uh, you can ask. Like I said earlier, um, uh, we'll try as much as possible to upload these videos online. Um, part of the information that have been shared, we share the document as well for us to read up and um, we'll uh, try and get permission to um, shift the assessment dates to a later date, maybe uh, next week, which will be communicated to all um, uh, participants for us to read up and get the information for the uh, prepare for the test. So. Um, questions, I can see hands being raised. Questions? Okay. My number. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello, can you hear me, sir? Yes, you have to check your audio. Okay, Mr. Reolu, uh, having bought ZK Tego product with the Nina software, guys, one more time, okay. okay. Let's look at the charts. There are questions under the charts. Hello, hello Mr. Isa. Yeah, hello, good afternoon, Mr. Godwin. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, my question is based on the first software we use, the K Z K dot net. Yes, we have. I just want to know the difference, the difference between under the device data, we have the normal machine and the enroll machine. Yes. Can you just tell me the difference between those two items there? All right. Um, normal machine is 
you are using you are using the registration on it you are doing um, um clocking on it if okay. if you are enrolling device means you are assigning that device additional feature to say that device is the only device you want to use as registration device okay 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 that's fine hello i'm with you sir yeah that, that that's fine then can you please explain further on this view what we have at the vdms you said that it's for cloud cloud storage w w d m s yes all right i also advise you download it is free you can download wdms and uh, check out the features you know um, some organizations um, don't want to host the application um, on their premise so they want a cloud service um, so if, if you if you're going to download it it serves like a point um, where you can be storing your information okay. you can add up the device to the uh, WT, uh, WDMS where you can now start spooling your information from. Okay. Another use is that if you want to integrate your, uh, the software, the, the output of the um, of the or the data from the device, mm -hmm. and you want to integrate it into another application, mm -hmm. what you actually need is the WDMS. Okay. So the WDMS simplifies the integration part. So if you want to integrate, it makes it much more easier. And um, uh, here in ZK Techo, we have our R and D team that can assist. And uh, you know, uh, one of our part of our competency is that we can develop application and do integration. Uh, for you, depending on your needs. So, with the WDMS, you can do integration um, uh, to to your third-party applications. Maybe you want to use into Sage uh, other payroll applications. So, um, already the BioTime has its own inbuilt WDMS, which is known as ADMS. So, you wouldn't want to go that route again. Okay. Yeah, my last question for the now is just the, the different. You may mention that the biotime.8.0 uh, is a web based application, right? Yes. Yeah. What about the, the other one? This is zktime.net. It's, it's, it's not. It's, it's, it's not. like you are installing the application and you when you launch the application, the application opens. But the biotime also, one another difference is. is um, browser based as well. So once you open it, it opens on your browser, whether uh, Google Chrome or Internet Explorer, depending on the browser that is um, the default on your PC. But ZKTime.net opens an, as an application, while BioTime opens on a browser. Okay. But just a very clear now, uh, both the BioTime and the ZKTime.net. I can view them remotely, right? If you want to view zktime.net remotely, it means you have to use another type of remote connection to that system. Okay. okay. Now, but BioTime, I don't need to remote into the system. I will just remote into the application using okay. a public IP. If, yeah, if I'm sorry, if the BioTime is hosted using a public IP. Okay. Mr. Watt, um, battery. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Is that clear, sir? Yes, for now. Okay. Mr. If Watt. I see no question, I will raise up my hand. Okay. Mr. Haruko is asking what is I know one a I know one a is a model of device that we have. One of the models of the devices we have. I hope you can see this. Okay. Let me put up this. This is what I know what it looks like. Okay, just a minute. Let me show you what I know what it looks like.
So this is what an A1A looks like. And for all those who are up, this is what um, MB460 looks like. It has a small uh, access control module behind it. You can use it as time attendance and um, access control. So this is your MB460, while this is your INO 1A device. Do we still have more questions? I have a question. <clears throat> All right, sir. Mr. David. Yeah, good day. Yes, sir. <clears throat> yeah, my question is um, how secure it is uh, about time? How secure it is? You said something about uh, we can install it on the uh, cloud, uh, cloud base or private server. How secure it is? Because if of uh, you notice, if you look into um, employee details, we there are lots of things to upload their personal details, which I feel um, security should be very high. So I want to know what what the level of security. Okay. Hello, Mr. David. Yes, I can hear you. All right. Um, bio time must be installed on your server at your premise. Okay. There are two different ways to do it. If you want to host your application on a cloud service, of course, you are going to be paying for both the security of the application. I mean, of the server you are using, you are, you are hosting the application on. Okay. However, if you want to install, you can also install it on your on-premise server. Okay. Then you, you can talk to your ISP, either um, Cobranet or IPNX or okay. MTN, for them to give you, um, for them to give you, uh, what is it called? A public IP. You are going to pay for it. They will, they will provide it for you. They will deploy their router at your office okay. then they will give you the the IP, public ip address for you to type into your server network port okay so when you type it the server is residing on your premise so whatever security features you have on your network is still covering that server okay so what we're just saying is if it's public you, you as the administrator, if you have not given out the um, IP address, if you have not given out the port number to people who will manipulate it for wrong, uh, uh, wrong things, then it will not. Because if you have your internal security, um, you know, uh, covering uh, your firewall, covering that particular server from being, uh, you know, tampered with, then you, you are good to go. Okay. Um, is it possible? I have another question, please. Is it possible? Ask, yes, is it possible you guys um, send us a catalog of your products? Should in case, because myself, I'm not very familiar with your products, so I would like to have catalogs of your products. Just, um, just visit, visit our website. Every document you want is there. Okay. Okay. Or on okay. products and on solutions. Oh, okay. All right. And it's also, okay. um, it can, you can you, also you. attach the files um, and send to participants as well. If you want okay. to, talk if, to, if you want, if you want the soft copy, we can try and get the soft copy for you and send. But every document you want, the PDF is on the website. Okay. Do you do you guys do something like um, um, distributors um, registration or vendor registration or something like that? Yes. As our office, our office is at 64 Ademola de Tokumbo in VI. I'm in Potakot. I'm not in Lagos. All right. I'm in Potakot so, in Nigeria. Um, can, can I, can I, okay, um, can we have your number? I can forward your number or the sales team, part of the documents they will send to all, all participants is if you want to become a, a, a partner, uh, they will send communication, a link 
will be shared. You can fill in the forms to be partners. So um, everybody uh, who is who has that interest can go ahead, just like you. Okay, so can I send my email and phone number to your email? Can I mail it to we, you? We already have that. You registered for this. Um, oh, fantastic. 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 Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. David. I appreciate it. All right, let's see if we can take uh, two or three more questions, then we'll, we'll call it a day for today's class. Any other hands raised? Any hands raised? All right. Hello, Miss Mr. Aziz. Yeah, well Hello. done. Well done. Well done, Mr. Goswell. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, sir. Um well, my question is um although um the previous uh, participants already asked most of the questions. So regarding the deployment, you know, you, talk, you talked about for the bell time, you talked about the on-premise and the, and the um, server deployment. Hello? I'm with you, sir. Yeah, and the server deployment. Yeah, my concern is um, for the, for the, on premise, which means for every security that has to be deployed on the that has to deploy deployed on the system will be installed on the server. Is that what you're trying to say? No, no, no. I mean, if you have a network, okay. If you are an IT, um, if you are the head of IT, of course. One of the most important things um, task is to make sure that um, there is no loophole on the network where um, you know there will be external attack into your network, either to um, uh, in terms of malware or uh, trying to hack into your system. So um, there are some there are networks that have to put in place firewalls and uh, security measures. You have your Active Directory set up so that people cannot connect to your... So if you have um, network computers, there are security measures you can put in place. Take for instance, uh, a visitor walks into your office, should not be able to connect to your internet link in your office if you have not given them the username and password to connect. Are, are you getting it, sir? Yeah. So, so the security I'm actually talking about is uh, based on the question that was earlier asked. That what what is the security about? That is it not um, uh, is it not a security porous if uh, you host it on the cloud? So, um, the the uh, server that you are going to install it on, it must be a server that cannot be assessed by an external person. So you as the administrator must make sure that that server is secured from external attack. So the IP address you are going to assign to, to that server is a public IP which you can only get from your ISP. Okay. So if you have that on that server, it means if you are the administrator, if you are outside your office, with the use of the public IP and the application port number, you can still access that application outside your office. Okay. Thank God for internet today. Um, we, we can access Google, but a lot of us don't know where Google server is. We can access Yahoo. Some of us don't know where Yahoo server is, but we can access it from anywhere. So yeah. with the public IP, um, we can access the application. Okay, well, thank you. You've answered my question. Yes. So 
One more question. One more question. Hello, okay. Mr. Iya. Yeah, thank you very much. So, um, it has to do with the security. I'm asking, can an SSL certificate be installed in the BioTime web server? Um, it doesn't have that uh, feature on the application, but you can go ahead and put in place other security measures on your network. Okay, um, exactly what kind of web server is the BioTime application using? Now, when we say web server, it's um, trying to make it view, viewable or reachable from any uh, location via your web browser. Yes, that's, that's what a web server is. So it could be a typical, uh, maybe like uh, small Nginx, Apache, or any of these uh, lightweight uh, web servers that are embedded in uh, Linux-based devices, you know. So, so long as it presents a web interface, it means there's some kind of web server software that um, is interacting with the backend application. So, um, from experience, um, it's easier to secure such applications with um, an SSL certificate so that when you connect to that web application, you see uh, the usual padlock sign that we see. Like if you yes. go on your ZK yes. website, you see the yes. small padlock information is secured, you know. Okay, I, I, I can get that information for you. Um, but I know another security measure that has been done. Um, I, I think I have a client that actually, instead of um, showcasing your IP address, they subscribed to this um, DDNS. To make yes, all of, all, 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 of, all of that goes. Also, it's, um, it can be integrated with the SSL certificate. The whole okay. idea of the SSL certificate is that wherever the connection is coming in coming from, from it should be secured it should be secured so whether we are going to be using a ddns service or we are going to be maybe creating a subdomain in our main domain and doing um dns records and pointing them to our internal public ip and doing all of that the bottom line is wherever they say the, the connection is coming from once it hits our bio time server it should be encrypted and secured okay, yes so I, I'll get that information for you, and um, I'll send it as part of the information we need to uh, send to our odd participants. Okay, that's that's fine. Uh, all right. Okay. Um, I sincerely want to thank everyone for being part. Yes, this class has you know taken even more than the scheduled end time and um, almost three hours. And I really want to uh, thank you all for being part of this training, uh, ZK Teco, and uh, what we try to do is um, to make sure that all our partners um, and also customers, end users, are able to know more about the products and um, solutions that we have. Uh, ZK Teco is closer to us now we are at 64 at uh, the in here in VI. You can come around and um, check out our experience center that has um, a whole lot of uh, devices, um, you know, to be showcased. Um, the also um, the class would continue tomorrow um, with some. Uh, I know some of us would have tried one or two things out. And uh, we want to round up the class by tomorrow and also um, take attendance again because it's important. And any other information, uh, we will try and reach out to everyone. Also, um, to intimate us on other modules that will be coming up, we have the CCTV modules and um, the communication will be sent to us. Some people have started registering already. Uh, and we don't want you to miss out in all the opportunities that we have. ZK 
um, with a lot of uh, products, lines, uh, products and uh, softwares to manage your products, even from one point uh, out there, licenses, uh, you can reach us and for its support is very, very key. Uh, I know some partners would not, you know, uh, purchase devices because of support. Uh, we are actually closer to you. If you need support on any ZK Teco products, uh, we are here, we will support you until you get value for your money, right? Uh, so I want to thank you for being part. If you have more information or uh, questions, you can do us an email. Um, try it. I will also send um, uh, our contacts, WhatsApp contacts uh, to us, visit uh, to, to, or for you to um, uh, uh, get in touch with us based on your questions you have around issues around the ZK Teco products and their solutions. Uh, so thank you once again for, for being part of today's class. We really appreciate you and um, stay connected to ZK Teco products and solutions. Thank you.